Oh no, me twin not working. Oh, I, I changed cap. Oh, no. Then, then I, I changed too. Still not working. I guess me need to talk to Spiri. Spiri, fix my tube amp. What do I do? What? I do not understand. Why don't you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Waiting? Spiri, what's the deal? Did you try D Lab Electronics? Be very impatient. Gonna call D Lab. Hey, welcome D Lab, everybody. On the bench, all the way from Japan. I have a Fender Deluxe Reverb kit amplifier. This one was made by Hoffman Amplifiers. The fella over in Japan built it. He said after he built it, he struggled to get it to operate. He had multiple issues. Finally, the amp started blowing fuses. And he said, I've had enough. So he boxed it up and shipped it to me to go through. The shorts were caused by multiple wires that were shorting to each other throughout the amp and the rectifier tube was internally arcing so those two things were causing the main power fuse to blow so I corrected that and then I noticed that the output tubes were intermittent and that was because they used these ceramic white sockets and we all know that these things are troublemakers so I installed some new old stock USA cinch sockets just for the octals. I brought the amp up, set the bias, and got this horrendous hum. I inspected the turret board and I found there's multiple ground paths on that board which is more than likely causing ground loops. I discussed this with the owner. He says I want that to be a Fender Deluxe amp and I need that reliability. So the agreement is we remove the Hoffman board and install a Fender Eyelet board. Let me show you the insides of this thing. All right, I'll pan the Hoffman turret board. The first thing that I spotted was this ground bus system. Now this was added by the owner. The Hoffman instructions shows the wire off the back of the pots like you would see on many of these new kit amp builds. Okay. So there was one path, there's another path, there's a ground runner here, there's a ground runner that comes off of this area of the board, there's another one over here. They also integrated their bias into the board so there was not a separate bias board. Now I have added one in preparation for the replacement of the turret board. The other thing is this board is approximately three quarters of an inch wider than a standard eyelet board so now gaining access to your controls for maintenance or inspection is almost impossible without removing the turret board and that is why we elected to install the fender eyelet board and when we're done we will have a fender deluxe reverb amp built to the print. So one thing I didn't mention is the owner installed all Jupiter capacitors on this turret board. We are going to remove those and install them on the new Fender eyelet board. I'm also going to install the Fender ground system behind the pots and jacks once I have this turret board out. So once I'm completed with all of this, we'll do another noise floor test and hopefully it's as quiet as a fender normally is. Alright, here is the noise level coming off of the deluxe reverb amp running the Hoffman turret board. I have my volumes at minimum. Reverb is all the way down and you can tell it's unacceptable. Here is the initial test of the deluxe reverb amp after removal of the Hoffman board and installation of a standard Fender Deluxe eyelet board. I've got everything wired up. The amplifier is on. Let's listen to the noise floor. Remember what we had before? What do we have now? 
pretty much noise free amp which is what he wanted in the first place when he bought the kit all right I'm going to inject a signal now vibrato channel <laughs> up some reverb plenty of reverb let's try the tremolo So all turned out well, as I was hoping. So installation of the fender board solved the noise problems. It eliminated a lot of troubleshooting, but the best part is, is now this is a Fender Deluxe design, which can be worked on. So the project is not 100% complete. I'm still awaiting a few components, but I'll give you a little quick tour. You can see I installed the Fender brass grounding plate. I also changed all the pots from alphas to CTS. The eyelet board is on standoffs. I reinstalled the Jupiter caps. Yes, we are still running the ceramic tube sockets for the 12AX7s, but it does have the cinch sockets installed for the octals. The bias pot, I'm still waiting on the right type with the screwdriver adjustment. There is the new bias board. I'm going to also install an insulator underneath of the power switch. I still need to reconfigure the power cord. But as for the initial test, it was a huge success. I'm very happy with the low noise and great performance of this amp.